Hello, in this video, let's make a question answering PDF chatbot just like this. We upload a PDF file, enter our OpenAI API key. We will need to set up billing at OpenAI because OpenAI API is not free. So yeah, make sure you do that. Otherwise, it won't return anything. And enter a question here. For example, how many AI publications in 2021 and click run. So the example.pdf file, I actually got it from the AI index report 2023. I downloaded the first chapter of this report. Um, it has more than 50 pages, so it's a good length. Okay, now we can see our result, 500,000 AI publications. And you can see it also returned two relevant source text chunks and the relevant information is actually in the second text chunk right here. Okay, so how about let's ask another question. When was GPT-2 released? Let's change the number of text chunk to be one so that we are only passing in one relevant text chunk to our language model. Now we get the answer. I think that was correct. You can also see this app in the Hugging Face Space page directly. I will add the links in the description so you can give it a try and let's see just to make sure it works here as well. Okay, cool. We'll get the same results. Now let's take a look at the code and see how to build this app with only five simple steps. And I will show you how to do that. Okay, before we get started, we need to install needed packages and import packages. We're actually using Panel as our dashboarding solution. I am a big fan of Panel. I wrote a blog post before um, three ways to build a Panel dashboard. Please feel free to check it out. I'll also link in the description. The first step of building our dashboard is to build widgets. We have a file input widget, uh, which you can see is pn.widgets file input. Uh, so this is where you can choose our PDF file, file input dot value should return the information of our PDF. And then OpenAI key is a password input widget. This is where you can type in your password. And also we have this widgets object, <laughs> which combines a lot of different widgets, which is we have a prompt. The prompt, uh, I guess this is a little hard to see. Let me move it up here. The layout is we want to organize things into one row. The first element of the row is two element. First element is prompt, which is a text editor where we enter a question. For example, how many AI publications in 2021? Um, and then we have a run button, which is a button widget is this run button and then we have some advanced settings uh, so in the advanced settings we have a select chain type so this is a radio button group where you can choose one of the options so in my previous video i talked about four ways to do question answering in line chain and i talked about what each chain type is so basically stuff is you put everything into your language model all of your text uh, map reduce is you separate things into batches and input each batch separately. And then I have the final widget is number of chunks, which is the select K widget, a integer slider. If you want to try out other types of widgets, you can check out panel documentation. So this is actually runnable on the web with the magic of PyoDide and PyScript. So it's actually quite nice. As you can see, we have a text input widget here, the default starting value is a string but you can change the value to whatever you like hello world and now if you get widget dot value you will get hello world and then you can change the value uh, and update the content of the widget so there are a lot of different types of widgets <laughs> so if you want to play around uh, this is a place for you to take a look so now we have talked about widgets the next step is to define a question answering function to get our answers of a question according to our PDF. This is what the function looks like. If you have watched my previous video, you may notice this is a method two that I mentioned in the video. 
in this function, we load our document. We use the PyPDF loader because I mostly want to interact with my PDF. If you have a txt file, if you have a csv file, you can use different file types accordingly. You can even write a, a if else statement to check Okay, so if my file is ending with a PDF, I use PDF loader. If my file is ending with a .txt, I use a text file loader. And then the second step is to split your documents into different chunks, select different embeddings you want to use, create vector stores to use as index, and use the retriever interface. Here I want to search for k text chunks that are most similar to my question text vector. So that's the similarity search here. And then we create a retrieval QA chain to answer our questions. As you can see, we have four parameters. The first parameter is file. This is the file we want to read from the PDF loader. The second parameter is query, which is our question. Uh, for example, what's the total number of AI publications? Chain type. Here I'm using stuff, but you can change it to MapReduce or other things. And k is a number of relevant chunks I want to pass in to the language model. To, so here's an example running this function. To run this function, we need to set up the OpenAI API key here. The result is we have a query, we have the result, we have two relevant source documents. Oh, by the way, here I'm using OpenAI models, which is not free, by the way. But there are many other language model providers. All the models on Hanging Face, I believe, is free. Well, it's basically the same code. So that's that. Let's comment this out because I don't actually need it in my app. OK, so now we have to find the question answering function. As you can see, this is purely a line chain. It has nothing to do with our panel app yet. We want to show the output of this function in the app. So how do we do that? So this is step three, where we show the output as a panel object so that we can see the output actually in the app. So OK, so here's how we did it. First of all, because this is chatbot interface, I want to store all my panel objects in the list. When we have a question, um, we'll show up as a question, and then we get an answer. You will append to this list. And then if I have another question, you will append as another question. This list will keep all the chat history. So that's why I have a empty list over here. In this function, actually, I define the OpenAI API key from the value of my OpenAI widget. And then I save my PDF file to a temp file. File input is the, the file input widget. And we can select a file we like. If we have uploaded a file, which means the file input value is not none. I want to save this file into a temp.pdf file. And then I saved the prompt value as prompt text. As you remember, hopefully prompt is a text input widget. Prompt value right now is the value we typed in the box. If there is text in this prompt text, uh, I want to run the QA function that we just defined in step two, where the file is the temp.pdf we just saved, and the query is the prompt text. Chain type is the value of select chain type. Right now it should be stuff. K, which is the number of relevant text chunks we want to retrieve, is the value of the select K widget. As you can see, um, it's it's two right here. So we want to convert the result into a panel object. Convo's list extend by this object. So let's take a look at this object. This first chunk right here returns our question. <laughs> this is the emoji corresponding to this prompt text is our question prompt. Now let's take a look at the second chunk here. We have again our emoji, which is a robot emoji. I thought that was kind of cute. And then we have the result that was returned from the language model, 500k uh, relevant source text. And then this whole thing, <laughs> I know, might look a little confusing. If we have more than one document in the source documents, for example, if we have two text chunks, I wanted to separate those two text chunks by a line here. So this is what this is. In the end, we just do a PN column with all elements in this list. So basically, we want to display everything in a column. Is that clear? I'm hoping that's clear. So just to remind you what we just did. In step one, we defined our widgets. 
Step two, we defined a question answering function. That's basically all LangChain code. There's nothing panel. Step three, we created a panel object that contains all of the answers questions and the source text chunks. So this function actually returns a panel object that we can use later in a panel app. Now is step four. Now you might wonder, how do I combine this function with my widget? How we only want to run the function and show the output when we click the run button. So we want to be able to somehow bind this function with the run button. So that's our step four, where we bind the run button with this QA result function so that only when the run button is clicked, this function will run. This is also the reason why we have kind of a placeholder for a parameter here. We're not using this parameter at all, but this is just a parameter for us to be able to add a widget um, run button right here in pn.bind. And I actually want to format my output into a box. Uh, just as you can see here. That's why I'm using another another widget called PM widget box to show my output in a box. But of course you don't need to do that. If you just do interact QA interactive, it should show up. And the final step, step five is to define the layout. You can write markdown in, in the panel app. And then we have some descriptions on how does this app work. And then you can see pn.row, which is the third row here, I guess. We have a file input widgets and open API key here and the output box and this output box. And then the widgets is this group of widgets. You need to add dot severable here because you want to make sure your app is severable. To, to serve this app, let's just do panel serve line chain and this file name. Okay. Ta -da -da. So this is our app. Just to double check it works. Yay, <laughs> it works great. <laughs> okay, so now you have a panel app. Okay, so in the final section of this video, I wanna show you how you can deploy this app to your Hugging Fit space so that you can share your app with the world. Okay, so you can see all my files here. Let's first take a look at the requirements.txt. So in the requirements.txt, this is all the packages you will need for your project. And then here's the notebook file. As you can see, it's the same as what we have just gone through. We need to save this PDF file into a .cache directory um, because it is because I'm going to show you right now in the Docker file, we made a .cache directory and we give permission to this .cache directory so that um, so that we can save a PDF and read from a PDF from this directory. What are the rest of the code in this Docker file? First of all, we get a 3.9, a Python 3.9 Docker image. We set our working directory as slash code. We pip install all the ne needed packages from this requirement.txt file. And then we copy everything else into the directory. Everything is in the code directory right now. Now this is the important bits where we run the panel app. We ran panel serve to serve our app. Here is exactly the same, but you need to kind of organize everything into a list. Uh, I know it looks a little strange, but it's the same. You do panel serve. Remember, we saved everything in the code directory. That's why uh, this file is in the code directory right now. You need to define the address and the port. Now WebSocket origin. So this is actually typing this address here. This is where you can see the whole app. Uh, you will need to change this bit into your corresponding. This is the username. This is your app name. As you can see, panel PDF QA. So this way you will get a separate page for your Hugging Face app. And the final thing that's special about, about this app is because we're using a Chroma vector store, it actually will need permissions to this directory. That's why here I made a directory called .chroma 
and give permissions to the Chroma directory. Yeah, so this is our app. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you. See you next time.